think it's both. It's being where you are, but also having very specific ideas in mind about what you want. If you don't actually believe it will happen, it won't because, yeah. you know, life gets that vibe too. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, you want it, but not really. It's real if you say it's real. Nobody's going to do it but you. Hi, and welcome to The Access Show. It's the place where you can find life hacks on how to become the best version of yourself and achieve your goals. We show you how to walk the talk from successful people. And today we're joined by June here. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thank you so mm -hmm. much for having me. Um, so yeah, my name is June Carroll. I am an actor and a playwright and a director. And I am currently working on Health Room, which appears on Hulu. I don't have to run down all of the reasons I just got to be where I am and accept where I am, hmm. but also have something specific in mind that I want. There's definitely something to like, there was a point where I made a list because I'd read somewhere, make a list of the people you want to work with. And I made a list of the people I wanted to work with and come behold, I got to a few people on the list <laughs> um, before I was even out of the gate. And it was like, like one of the coolest things that ever happened to me was that I decided, by God, I want to work with Keanu Reeves. I want to be in a scene with Keanu Reeves because he's so freaking cool. <laughs> and I got to do a scene with Keanu Reeves. Wow. And I just, I mean, as it was happening, like, I'll never forget, he comes out of the elevator because I, I got to play his secretary and I got to be the surly secretary. And um, it was, uh, he comes out of the elevator and he's just really low key and really cool, but really shy. And he goes around to every last one of us in this office and there had to have been 10 of us there. And he's like, hi, I'm Keanu Reeves. Hi, I'm Keanu Reeves. Hi, I'm Keanu Reeves. And he gets to me and he's like, hi, I'm Keanu Reeves. And idiot that I am, I'm like, I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I think part of it was just there was my heart going, this was something that I had put out in the universe and the universe said, okay, I just made that happen for you. Yeah. So I do think it's both. It's being where you are, but also having very specific ideas in mind about what you want mm. Mm. and really getting behind those and believing in those, you know, mm. Mm. and not getting behind, not trying to get behind things that you don't believe in. If you don't actually believe it will happen, it won't because- yeah. You know, life gets that vibe too. The universe gets that vibe too. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, you want it, but not really. Yeah. 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 There's something you want instead. So let's go work on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that idea on energy. And can I ask you, do you get a lot of your energy and, and let's say willpower to do these things from other people or is this all within you? I think it's from, it's a combination. It's mm -hmm. from the people who inspire me my sister inspires me no end. My mm. mother inspired me. There are people who have done this job that I want to be like. They mm. inspire me. And I just think as I've gotten to be friends with myself and with the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, that inspires me. That The idea of there's just something out there that said, you know what? I think I want things to be. And mm. suddenly here's the world. There's a whole world happening. There's a whole universe happening. I know mm. that sounds woo-woo. I, I, I don't mean to be woo-woo, but it's like, you know, create the, the will to create. Yeah. That mm. burst the entire universe. And we mm. get to be a part of that. <laughs> That's inspiring. That inspires me too. Yeah, definitely. I think you have to see exactly where you want to be at and then you can make it happen and exactly. uh, yeah do you do you have maybe vision boards how does it work do you do you i do vision boards yes yeah yeah i think that you know i only learned about them a few years ago um and uh they have helped immensely mm. because if it, because it's just you taking the energy in your head and making it tangible mm. you know um and it also gets you to be very specific about yeah. what it is you, mm. you know, and I think that's what the universe, that's what creativity requires, specificity, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah, I really love that key word, specificity. I think that nowadays it's kind of lost on people because, you know, we have all these 
blockbuster movies coming out and series and people just say hey it's about you know superheroes or it's about this yeah. it's this yeah. whole genre but uh can i ask you is there is there like let's say a particular genre that you think has the most um creativeness this this, this the most specificity in their creativity honestly i think I kind of think science fiction. Mm. I kind of think I I um no magic realism. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Magic realism. That's the one. Because in theater, where you can conjure anything, where the world kind of is what the playwright says it is in that moment. If you want a giant to show up on stage, a giant shows up on stage. Um I think that. Those two genres, magic realism and science fiction, because they are so dependent on um, um, the concrete, like Mm. to spin a science fiction world that works, you gotta know everything. Mm. Mm. You gotta know down to the last detail what, how that world works. Yeah, and the same thing happens in magic realism. If you want the giant to show up on stage, you have to know specifically how and why the giant shows up on stage. Hmm. There's less room for happy accident in Hmm. those two genres, just because the science of how it works just has to be right, Hmm. you know? Yeah, that really does make sense to me. And as an actor, can I ask you, do you find it easier to act in a context that is more, let's say, you know, everyday life? Or do you find yourself finding it easier to create in the context of science fiction and magic realism? Um, strangely enough, the world has no bearing. Mm. It, it doesn't, it, because I think what's neat about being a person, being human is that we are so adaptable, Mm. you know, or when we allow our, when we allow ourselves to be, we are adaptable. Mm. And so I think the thing about acting is it's real if you say it's real, you know? And so the circumstance, the why doesn't necessarily, or the how doesn't necessarily make sense, matter, the why does. Like with Hellstrom, it was like, okay, so this is a world where (laughs) demons exist at the same time that a person who studied demons does not believe in demons. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) At at a certain point, you just kind of have to give over. And so it's just what the, the thing about acting is giving yourself over to the given circumstance whatever you got to do to believe it Mm. you know whatever you got to do to believe it you do it and then you're able to go there i think that's the that's the fun of acting it's like because you can get dropped anywhere you can get dropped literally anywhere and if you give over to it it works (laughs) you know other people may see it and be like "Eh, i didn't like it but as long as you as long as you buy in you've done your job yeah (laughs) <laughs> and how do you see projects you work on you talked about Hellstrom uh is it more do you view it as a stepping stone towards your goal or it's just work or it's just having good, good time it's 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 a joy it's an honor to get to do it every time I count myself lucky and think okay this may be the last one so enjoy it <laughs> um every time I get somewhere new it is a stepping stone um because I learned something new you know, um, like with this, I had to learn how to sustain a character over several months. Yeah. Whereas in a play, yeah, it's several months, but it's all in one go, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so, you know, getting to work with so many different people mm. was an honor. 
you know, because I had to exercise different muscles every time because it was like, okay, so who are you? And we're creating this world together. This is a partnership. So yeah, I may have gotten here first, but your energy, your vibe is going to affect me if I allow it to. Mm -hmm. And I get to learn that too, how to adapt there too. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, I know I keep sounding a little vague. I don't mean to, but it's just, it is a stepping stone. Yeah. It is an education, but it's also just a joy. Just mm, an absolute yeah. joy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you, Jim, because I myself am an actor as well. And, uh, yeah. and I just find myself seeing these projects as these wonderful opportunities to grow. And, and since I know that you've been, you know, in movies and in, uh, in this TV series, Hellstrom, can I ask you, where do you think... Is it more of a school? You know, where is there more to learn on a on a movie shoot that's going to go fifteen to thirty days, or on something that you come into work for regularly? Regularly. Hmm. Um. Well, think about it. I think about it like this: theater is always going to be the best teacher. Yeah. Because again. You always have to do everything in one go. Yeah, you got to go home and come back, Mm. but it's always to do everything in one go. Mm. Um, It was my first teacher, so it will always be my first love. Mm -hmm. Um, It teaches you the most, particularly Shakespeare. Mm. Television, you have to learn how to parachute in real quick to something that is already made there for you. And you're just sort of like, okay, what's my job? Okay, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do my job and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna bounce, (laughs) right? That's a very different skill. Where you are doing something regularly over the course of like a a series, you have to learn stamina. Mm. You know, you have to learn to, I don't know how people who do series for years on end manage to continue to find the magic stuff. Mm. Mm. I would love to find out, not right now, but someday Mm. I would love to find out what it's like to have to find that magic over an extended period of time, yeah. you know? But I do think that the cl- it's just different classrooms. Theater will always be your best teacher for how to, everything you need to know, everything you ever needed to know about acting, you will learn doing Shakespeare. Mm. But when you just need to learn how to slot yourself in, fit in, do your part, that's like the guest star, the film role and then stamina is like the full series i it's it's all learning it's all education yeah i think and talking about education do you do something on a daily basis maybe do you have rituals to you know stay educated and you know stay sane practice medication uh, meditation or this kind of stuff yeah i do i do i um got into um journaling every morning and Mm. meditation and prayer every morning and because like with journaling it's just a way to dump Mm. because a whole day happens and all this stuff happens and some of it affects you some of it doesn't some of it you know sticks with you some of it doesn't and just to download all of that is really helpful and then to reconnect with myself is where you know, meditation and prayer come in. Just reconnect with myself and this whole thing that we're all in, existing in. Yeah, and it's it's healed me a lot. The whole process has healed me a lot. So my morning takes anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours just to get through that part. Yeah. And I love it. (laughs) I love it because it's a chance to just connect and be still. Yeah. Yeah, I think journaling is a very important part of yeah. you know, daily life. And uh, I, I just started doing, you know, a gratitude journal. Yeah. And, uh, I, I think it's so powerful. And it's also, it, uh, it syncs very well with the vision board. And yes. I do it every single morning. And then mm-hmm. I, I'm like, I'm grateful for this. And it wow. just synced with my vision board. And I'm like so much more productive during the day. Mm-hmm. It's amazing, right? Mm, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I try to journal myself actually, but the thing is, this guy, he keeps telling me that I should do a gratitude journal and I want to, but I find myself 
kind of steering towards analyzing events of my day, you know, at the end of my yes. day. Yes. And and can I ask you, how important do you think um, is reflection to the process of growth? I think it's inescapable. It's 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 it. Mm. You can't grow without reflection. Mm. I mean, I think there are parts. There there are two parts of. There are two parts. There's the looking back and the what do I make of this so that things don't just get lost in your subconscious, just get buried there. That mm. you know, joys and wounds. Mm. You know recognition i think it's just so vital to reflect mm. but i do think that gratitude is also a part of it because mm. those things are real too those things that you are grateful for are real too whether or not you're you know listing them out out loud or on paper you know recognizing them somehow or other is um it's as much healing as the reflection. It's they're both they're both value they're both invaluable. Mm -hmm. you know? But yeah, I think you have. I think that either you reflect or you bury it. Mm. And yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot of damaged people in the world because they bury stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. No, I agree. And speaking of healing and this kind of healing power, is there something that? in your life that you have maybe an item or something that you can share with us that keeps you grounded, but also gives you that motivation and energy to just keep on keeping on? I have this, um, uh, I won't, I'd have to leave camera to get it. I have this worry stone mm. and I just connect with it, you know, every so often, you know, when I'm feeling anxious and just put the energy there, put the energy that maybe I missed during my morning reflection I put it there and uh it helps but my journal more than anything mm -hmm. you know I just it, it's it's my uh grounding wow. yeah oh and I have this special <laughs> it's funny I have a special pen a very <laughs> special pen that I have to write with I have to journal <laughs> you know like, and sometimes good. the pen yeah. runs out of it it's like <sighs> <laughs> and I know I just know somehow the journaling that morning isn't quite as good because I didn't use my lucky pen <laughs> but at least I got it out at least I got the journaling in <laughs> I think it's super important to create your own rituals and just yeah. your daily life yeah and you feel more mm -hmm. comfortable and all that and, yeah uh, when you first started you you said that you you started in uh, in San Francisco and never looked back but did you have a, a plan b or something like this no no. Nope. Um, Sydney Poitier said, "Don't have a fall back plan because you will fall back." Yeah, mm. he's absolutely right. Mm. That's what I'm talking about when I say that um, you have to have a vision and be very, be very specific. Very often, I think that, especially with something like acting, there's a, I really want this, but just in case, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And the problem is, or maybe the challenge is, the universe is paying as much a chance as as much attention to the just in case. Yeah. And it's not to say that you have to just um, throw all common sense out the window. Yeah. It's just if acting is your primary focus, it has to be. You know that that saying, you can't serve two masters. It's kind of true with acting mm. too. Mm. You know. It's like when I was um, really, really struggling, because I think we never really stop. But when I was really, really struggling and I was bouncing from uh, survival gig to survival gig, I had in, the head, in my head, this is temporary. This is temporary. This is not a just in case. Because the one time that I did go to um, the fallback, I spent two and a half years in a museum and I loved being at the museum. It was gorgeous. It was fun. I'd go to the, the, the collections and I'd stare at the, the statues and <laughs> I was miserable and everybody around me was miserable because that was their, the museum was their plan B. Yeah. And the yeah. minute I decided, I realized I was getting comfortable and could just as easily not do this anymore. I was like, I got to get out. Mm. Because I wasn't done with acting. Have a plan B if you're done with acting. 
But if you if you're not done with acting, and if you just if you're just starting, for God's sake, don't have a plan. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> the acting will fly right out the window the minute you need to make rent. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when you when you set your goals, do you have just an ultimate goal in mind, or mm -hmm. do you break it down? How does it work? Um, I. I don't, I've, I've learned to just have the specific goal and not worry about the how so much. Every time I start getting in the weeds about how, I get distracted. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't work quite as well as when I just sort of, this is the, that's the, Keanu Reeves, perfect example. Keanu Reeves, that's the goal. I don't know how, I yeah. don't know when, I don't know why, but that's the goal. And then come behold, I trip and fall over it mm. because I'm busy doing my other stuff. You know, I'm just doing my thing. And so, you know, the same thing with, I had this play. I wrote, I, when I was, when, in 2007, I wrote a, a I, I got to work with this amazing troupe from Zimbabwe and it got me so obsessed with what was happening there that I ended up writing a play about it. And it became part of my vision board to get this play done. And it took 10 years, but by God, <laughs> I wrote that play. And mm. now I'm on the cusp of having the play done in Zimbabwe. Mm. So it was mm. like, you know, it was like, so I had the vision board and the vision board on the vision board was the good minister from Harare. Mm. And that was it by June Carroll. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. Every so often I come back and I got to retool the thing this year. I, I, I mean, I, I, I was able, to, I was so blessed. I got an, uh, I was awarded the uh, Saroy and Paul Prize for this play for a few mm. plays about humanitarian issues. And then I um, got to do an incredible Zoom reading of it this June, this past June. And now this possibility exists of doing it in Zimbabwe. So it's like, just have the goal, have a very specific goal, but don't try to canoodle with the why or with the how yeah mm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. i love that i love that energy and that kind of just manifestation and yeah. um and you mentioned before that you used to be you know shy and uh, and i can relate to that but how, how did you put yourself out there in a place to be found and for your work to 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 have its moment in the spotlight how do you put yourself out there when you are a shy person I think you just get mad enough about mm. the way the world is or about being shut down. Yeah. You just get mad enough. And one day you're just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm talking, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm a talk right now. Yeah. And that, that honestly is what it is. It's a sort of righteous indignation. Uh, uh, this, te this guy, um, Mark uh, uh, Rydell, Mm -hmm. said uh disgust is an amazing thing because the minute mm. you reach disgust that's where the change that's where change happens and i think yeah. you just get so mad at the world i got so mad at the world that i said you know what i'm gonna go yell and i got mm. in a play and i yell i got to do, i got to do a play where i got to yell and i got to throw things and, <laughs> you know i got so mad at the world that i wrote a play and then mm. i got so mad at the world that i put that play out there yeah you know yeah yeah i i i think the, the the challenge with being shy it doesn't ever necessarily go away it will always be who i am at base mm. but i get worked up enough about things that it's not enough to settle on being shy mm -hmm. you know you just get goaded into speaking your piece yeah and that's a welcome place that's a welcome place to go think of i think of acting as an as, a, as the, the best excuse to talk yeah mm. or like the best excuse to be yourself or to be yourself. yeah yeah and uh if you had maybe one advice to give to shy and struggling people or maybe the best advice you ever received what would it be you think Uh, how did my friend put it? Um, nobody's going to do it, but you, no one can do it for you. Mm. Um, 
there's this director here in Los Angeles, Michael Matthews. He's utterly brilliant. And he hired me to do cabaret, uh, I guess it's three years ago now. And he looked at me one day because he saw that I was hiding. Hmm. And he was like, your, your role, the way this thing is built is the heart of the show. Hmm. So you kind of got to do it. Mm. <laughs> you just kind of got to do it. And you kind of have to decide if this is who you are. If it is, then you're going to have to do it. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, shyness is never, can never be an excuse. And playing small does nobody any favors. Mm. Mm. And that goes for acting it goes for love it goes for friendship um living your life small does no one any favors so even if it's like pulling teeth just do it mm. yeah definitely yeah all right i think we can uh, end on the questions here and uh june it's promo time for you so whatever you want people to check out about you Uh, go ahead. It's your time. <laughs> okay. Guys, see Hellstrom. It's so good. It's so good. Um, it's amazing. The actors are amazing. The adventure is amazing. Um, and, oh, if you're looking for something to, if you're looking for a good scream, there's a, a theater called Vagrancy. The Vagrancy. They have a a uh, YouTube channel, just check out their stories. Check mm. out the stories at The Vagrancy. I have a play up there of 16 actors. It's in response to the death of Oluwatoyin Salau. It's called The Life and Death Of, um, but it's on The Vagrancy and they're a really important company. So mm. check them out. Okay, that was a great episode. And uh, Leo, what are the key takeaways? Well, I think I loved her idea about, you know, relying on yourself, but still doing the manifestation because things, the thing is that it's so easy to just go 100% in one direction or 100% in the other, you know, rely on yourself too much or rely on manifestation too much. It's important to find that balance, that equilibrium. And that was a theme, I think, a recurring theme in our, in our, in this episode, because I think that to June, It is so important to maintain that, you know, working on yourself, but working on your relationships with others, putting yourself out there, but still staying true to yourself. If you're shy, for example, it's always important, I think, to keep everything in mind, but to focus at, on one thing at a time. And that's going to give you that balance. Mm -hmm. So I think that the key word here is balance, you know, keep it, stabilize it, cultivate it. What about you, Matthew? What are you going away with? Well, the part about, you know, being shy and how to break away from it, you know, uh, just being mad and, uh, and doing your thing because uh, you have to make it happen for yourself. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. And yeah. I think that uh, it goes with the goal, you know, of uh, aiming for some, something and not even knowing, you know, how you're going to accomplish it. And sometimes it's just like a leap of faith. And uh, even if you, you don't know how it's going to happen and it's good to have your, your mind set on something and just going for it. And, you know, uh, for, for her, you know, acting was, you know, it, it was her goal and, and it was a work and it was a passion. It's all that. And I think that when you're in this kind of, in this state, uh, you can just aim for something and not caring about how it's going to happen. You know, you're doing yeah. what you love and, uh, and it's your goal, it's your passion. So just, yeah, yeah, you, you aim for something and you just go like full throttle on it, you know? Yeah. Well, thanks so much for watching The Access Show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ooh, that was nice. You think they're going to do it? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're going to do it. <laughs>